G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is an instigating combat shotgun of the three-star variety. As you can tell up here, we've got a little bit more limb damage. That's equivalent to the uh, crippling effect back in Fallout 4, which is now being demoted to a major effect. So now you're not going to have any crappy rolls with just a little bit of limb crippling. That's just an added bonus, which is where it should be. It's a good idea to have that there. We've also got a 15% faster reload, which will help us jam mags in this, and it'll help us uh, with the downtime with reloads. We'll get into that a little bit later as we get into game play but yeah this is what we do have the hardened receiver doing 112 damage and a little bit of an unconventional thing i'm sort of testing this out i'm going to see how it goes with a shush tube just to see if this thing can be a viable stealth weapon and if i don't like it we're going to go loud and proud and probably change up some more of attachments here but mostly this is going for looks i like the look of the glow sights that are also a ring sight too so let's go ahead and upgrade this thing's damage by the use of chucking on shotgun perks unfortunately these are not in well they're in alphabetical order and doesn't group together all of the uh, things that it should. See, I think I missed Expert Shotgunner down here. Yes, I did. But Shotgunner is over here. We've also got Scattershot, which will increase our reload speed and also make shotguns weigh a lot less. Skeet Shooter, as well as Concentrated Fire. For a combat shotgun of the explosive variety, like I did before, I'd have Grenadier here for a little bit more splash damage, which helps us take down enemies. But we can have both Skeet Shooter and Concentrated Fire because Grenadier would do absolutely nothing unless I decide to toss a grenade. Enforcer is a must with a shotgun. It's basically your end stay back and fall at um, 4. Unfortunately, it doesn't throw people around. just sort of sticks them in place. But going over to Luck, we do have Critical Savvy just to make our crits come back a little bit quicker. And we've also got Bloody Mess. Unfortunately, my agility isn't maxed out. Ideally, I'd like to have that at 15 so we could uh, chuck on a little bit of... um covert operative but maybe i don't think we'll have to rely on that uh, extra sneak damage all that much since we do have that extra 60 percent that we get out of um shotgunner there so oh the weapon card actually came up and 206 damage is what we're looking at here that's no adrenal reaction or anything that's just what it's like so fairly good start now, if I had access to console commands, I'd probably like to have Gladiator at rank 3 on my strength tree instead of having one rank in Basher and one rank in, um, uh, Band or two ranks in Bandolier because, yeah, having that extra survivability, especially for a squishy one in uh, two endurance build like me, is going to suck a little bit. But, ooh. Wow, I wasn't expecting it to go this well. <laughs> okay. We'll keep on going and. Okay, we didn't get quite as uh, good damage on that one. I don't think all the pallets landed, but wow, I didn't actually expect it to be one-shotting everything. That's incredibly efficient. I don't think I can even one-shot these guys with a... I mean, I didn't use a combat shotgun of the two-shot explosive variety with a suppressor. Also, I missed you. Well, I didn't miss him that time, but wow, okay, I'm impressed so far. One shell, one kill, and that's efficient. I've actually had this one sitting in my inventory for a while. Uh, normally I'd like to alternate between my stealth commando character and this character just to keep the variety going, but Winters, she's she needs a rest. She's been on quite a long time, so I'll, <laughs> I'll also need to clear a lot of weight out of this character's stash, so if I have a weapon uh, spotlight video on one of those things and then just sell the weapon after. Two birds, one stone. I can get rid of uh, some weight and I can give off these weapons to anyone who really wants them. So without stealth, we can't exactly one-shot those guys, but it's clean so far. The only damage we've taken is from the couple of rads that we've just ran into, but that's okay. We'll move on inside. Okay, I want to see if I can get a little bit of VATS gameplay in here, but obviously not against someone whose head is obscured by a steel rod, but uh, we'll see how we go. I think we've got a crit ready at this point, so we'll see if we can just nail him on the head. Yeah, okay, at this range, probably not the best thing to uh, use this thing in VATS, if at all, really. So we are detected right now. Hopefully we can get ourselves with uh, the help of Escape Artists back into Caution so that we might one-shot crit all of these guys again. That looks like we're in caution to me. And now we can sneakily sneak around and fucking make things explode with buckshot. So, you know, that's cool. Take you out. So, yeah, um, the reason I do have a uh, true and aligned uh, stock and a uh, barrel, not in that order, because, uh, look, look at that. The, the spread's really tight. And that with Skate Shooter 2 makes you, yeah, having a tight uh, pallet spread will actually allow you to, you know, hit all of your pellets on a target at that range, and when you couple that with the instigating effect as well as sneak attack criticals, 
you can do quite a bit of damage, even at ranges where you're probably not supposed to get that so i could tighten the spread even more if i chucked on a true stock which um i did have on my um combat shotgun of the two shot variety but without the two shot legendary effect this thing it maintains its accuracy a lot better so i also wanted to put a full metal stock on it because for aesthetical purposes it does look a lot better too so right now we've probably got adrenaline in full swing too and we're not failing to one-shot these guys. I don't have to aim for the head. See if I can shoot him in the legs and they'll instantly die. No, not that far. Okay, we are in the old danger now, but let's go ahead and just crit him with that. So that's the reason that I did chuck on some concentrated fire, just so I could actually target the face. And I get decently good chances, but this thing, um, this is not exactly optimized best for that because I don't have a reflex site which would allow me to use less AP per shot, but it seems to be doing just fine as we head into the control room. Nice two-star. We've got a suppressor's gorse rifle. That's explosives of all. If, yeah, if that one's explosives, I'll probably shit my panties, and so will the person that I'm selling it to as well. All right. So he's panic firing over in that direction. My aim is failing on me, but that's okay. And there's a quick reload there. So having that extra reload speed along with um, speed demon really does help because there's barely any downtime even though the shotgun doesn't really load all that quickly to be honest compared to other weapons and what have we got over here just you I must have missed you and without a sneak attack critical we're able to one shot that guy so I guess the last room left is in fact oh wait there's a couple more around here isn't there Again, these guys don't know where I am, so I can easily just one-shot those guys. You have to aim a little bit more. You have to consciously have an effort of aiming this thing when the spread is this tight. It's actually... Yeah, it's like I've got a full choke on it or something. It's like enough... There's nothing. Also, it says I'm in danger, but I'm still getting sneak attack criticals, so I think the old detection meter is a little bit buggy today. But regardless of that, we'll keep on moving. These guys might have all filtered through when I aggroed the other ones, so I guess the only blokes we have got left are the ones who are sitting behind this terminal room. A lot of the function of my build right now is basically trying to do as much damage without taking... Oh, yeah. Doing as much damage while taking the least amount of damage that I can. And that is why I've got this thing out for the stealth. But I know people get fucking annoyed at me if I use suppressors on shotguns, even though you're seeing why I would actually want to do that. But uh, we'll keep on going either way. And this is where... Um, I really need stealth because there's a lot of guns pointing at me right now. In fact, what I'm going to do is try to jump over this desk and get stuck on it because physics. Now that I'm out of the firing line, I can use uh, marsupial more tactically there. And I'll go and shoot these guys, which are a lot more easy to kill when they're not, um, you know, all bunched together and not all shooting you at once. And if we're lucky, we can get ourselves back into caution. Although they seem pretty fucking switched on to where I am. Even throwing grenades in my general direction. Okay, we're back into caution now. So, some effort needs to be made to actually play smart if you wish to survive on a shotgun build like this. See, that's that's the reason sometimes a strength build isn't so good. Because, uh, yeah, you trade a lot of survivability when you use two, step, uh, two stats as a dump stat. That being adrenaline, oh, not adrenaline, that's a completely different thing. Um, charisma and endurance, but uh, I do make that up a little bit whilst using the sneak attack criticals, so I think I've got it sort of good. Could be better. If I have access to console commands in the future, I could probably optimize a build for each and every one of the weapons to actually make use of them best and actually give you proper survivability. But we're stretched a little bit thin in the name of versatility. But uh, I've made it work, I feel like. I don't like to toot my horn that much, but uh, I didn't expect it to go that smoothly. And I do think that is thanks to the suppressor. So let's take it off. Let's step out of our comfort zone, shall we? Okay, new loadout as follows. So I've got a perforating magazine now, less uh, size for more armor penetration, reflex sight, and the suppressor has come off. So, we'll go ahead and test this on some ghouls. Also, that's how much it degraded. This was a full bar. There wasn't a double bar, just a full one. It's gone down about a third, maybe a bit more. So, not the most durable weapon in the world, is it? 
And whilst I'm in my perk cards menu just getting this thing repaired with Weapon Artist, and I've actually swapped out a rank of Snake, or two ranks of Snake for uh, Action Girl and Gun Fu, because I'm going to try to use this a little bit in Vats, I reckon. Okay, fingers crossed for a spawn here. Uh, let's have a look. Oh, yep. Yep, they're shambling around. So here's my plan. What I'm going to do is sit behind the manager's counter, because I've noticed how these ghouls sort of flock around a little bit, and they don't like to step into the manager's thing. Can you fucking die? Why aren't you dying? Bethesda, I'm being killed by ghouls because I, I literally can't kill... Okay, there we go. Okay, so we're not off to a great start here. Probably should have stayed in a um, stealth character, to be honest, but that, that's okay. We, we didn't get too badly damaged. We were, we were worse off before, I think, born survivor procced there. Alright, that's time. Alright, I'm suffering a little bit thanks to this thing not being super great with um, its reload or its ammo capacity, but you saw that nice little uh, a gun through run there. That actually did pretty good. I didn't actually kill that guy. He must have run out the other way, but uh, yep. Even though we, were th we basically walked in there like a dumbass, we managed to you know, step out of this situation. I mean, we were hit many times, but we survived, and the shotgun, despite its low ammo capacity by my design, has actually got us through that, which is pretty good. You can die, by the way. What did you have on you, my friend? I'll probably never see that duel ever. I'll probably have to get up there with my friggin' jetpack, but... Alright, what have we got left? Just a couple of lads over here. Easily killed them now with a little bit of that adrenaline. And I th think we might be done. Yo, yep, yeah, we're done. So, yeah, not too bad. Not obviously a drum magazine would have helped there, but I'm guessing that, you know, that armor penetration did all right too. Okay, there's probably someone out there that saw the nuke going off down here and wanted to see some Scorch Beast uh, Queen gameplay. We do have Enforcer, so she should be dropping on the ground. I'm just going to shoot her in the wings, and when you uh, are shooting at a wing of this thing, you got to wait till a little bit of a moment to when the wing sort of stops in midair. You see how he, she's showing you all of that wing? If you get your shots timed just about right, you can make sure that all of your pellets sort of hit that spot, but uh... Other than that, you can just go for that. Everything is broken, so she's just going to hover there, which means all of the blokes around here with their various explosive weapons, I don't even know what that guy's shooting at. One of us is lagging here, and it ain't me. I'm on an Australian server. All right, down she comes, and uh, hopefully she gets stuck there. Uh, also, I should probably just pop a couple of right -aways. And almost got killed there. That was really close, so... Maybe I should just step off a little bit here. And now Enforcer is procced. She's completely stuck. There's a Grognak over there just whacking the fucking shit out of that Batman. And <laughs> doing a whole lot of damage. So, yep. So, Enforcer, you can sort of be like a team player along with that too. If you're not playing solo, maybe you've got a Scorch Beast raid or whatever. You can actually... Um, make yourself pretty useful when downing Scorch Beasts, especially when you're playing with a bunch of Grognaks too. As for these mobbing pricks, you just, you just shoot them once and let someone else kill them for XP, basically. But it's a nice way to get yourself a little bit more levels if you don't feel like taking on the Queen directly. I think we're out of uh, stim packs at this point, so I've got to be wary of that. Alright, I smell a landed Queen, and she landed on top of a crab of some description. Unfortunately, hermit crabs aren't in that crabby location. That'd be cool if they turned up here. Ugh, it's a glowing rad toad. Absolutely disgusting. Okay, now she's all sitting there, and yeah, I don't know how much damage I'm doing, honestly, but yeah. Just uh, kill those things for extra adrenaline, and just keep plugging away, I guess. That one too. Maybe I should play a little bit more support. This guy's getting harassed by bears. And they're no joke, by the way. Bears will fuck you up. There's another one. Kill that one. Very good. Make sure you're sticking right here. And let all of the blokes with axes, swords, whatever you have, the fucking whack it in the face and do lots of damage. Just a little bit more, and we'll have the Queen's number. She dead, we get the XP instantly, 
turn into a goo pile, which is unfortunate for someone who, you know, can't see that. Oh, so here's a Scorch Beast. We'll take that out. We'll fight a bat on our own later because we've got a bunch of people around me. Too many extraneous variables. We can't actually have a good idea of what our weapons are doing. So let's quickly loot this queen. We've got a couple of things, I suppose, of interest. I kind of needed that site, that ultra site too. I was running a bit low from uh, crafting various things. You okay there, Schmid? Shimmed? I think he's okay. I thought he fell over then because he died, but maybe... I, I don't know. Let's just get the hell out of here before I lag out. Kill that fucking sloth first. Take that, Sid. Remember Sid from Ice Age? Okay, we're back with our regularly scheduled programming, and what I'm going to do here is we've got a crit ready, we're going to use that with the instigating legendary effect, just to see what we can do to spawn on our initial blow. Crit ready, we're close enough, I think. And finish him off in bats a little bit. You know what, I'm just gonna cripple his leg, or attempt to cripple his leg here, just so we can... Oh, my, my shotgun a perk. But... There we go, stop them in his tracks. Now that's what I call a sexy man pose. You've never seen anything like that before. Also, I've never actually seen that animation. Ooh, I thought he was going to get up then. So yeah, sometimes if you get in or get out of power armor, you just have to, you know, unequip and then re-equip the weapon, and then you can reload as fast as you can like that. Sorry to leave you hanging there, so when I had to demonstrate a little bit of a bug that I've uh, found in the game, but it's not a annoyingly game-breaking one. It's just one of those irritating ones like, oh, okay, I'll just have to re-equip the perk or a weapon again, and yeah, you're right to go, but yep, let's go ahead and uh, shoot some fucking crustaceans. Got it. Got it this time. Alrighty, let's just run straight in here and see if we can get ourselves out of this with a little bit of vats and crit. Well, it did there, and... Half his health was neutralized, he was staggered from Enforcer, I suppose, so that's him dead, and I think all of the basic crabs are gone, so I guess the Queen's up next. We'll have to do a little bit of a segment after this to see the adrenaline damage on this. Unfortunately, we were a little bit too accurate with that plasma grenade there, so we weren't able to find any of that extra damage, but what I'm going to do here is cripple the spouts. So, yep. With that in mind, she's probably going to run up and punch us now, but that's okay, because she won't be spitting acid, so if I just sit up here... Oh yeah, crippling the spouts, using Enforcer to do that is an excellent idea. See, she can't do anything to me now, I can just hop up here with, um... Yeah, I mean, it's a tactic that should be a no-brainer at this point, you definitely want to use something like that to your advantage, especially when you've got a weapon that... It... Oh, hang on. We can just kill these guys. That's fine. A little bit of gun fuel action on diseased myler catchlings. It's cruel. 369 damage giggity with 60 um, adrenaline. Of course, we have to factor in a little bit of adrenal reaction to that too. But yep, getting around the 400 mark, which is definitely very, very powerful. There's a two-shot explosive one for scale. I don't even have demo expert on right now. That could be better, but... <laughs> Even so, this thing is still holding up really, really well. You'll notice with explosive weapons too, the damage is really inconsistent. For some reason, enemies seem to shrug off explosions in this. I don't really know why. I think it's just netcode issues. The game has to produce an explosion where your bullet hits, which can cause conflict when a thing is moving around. Network, blah, blah, blah. That's what I think happens. I could be completely wrong. Remember, I'm just a fucking shit talker on the internet. I don't know if I can game designer or programmer, but hopefully with the subsequent patches they can eventually fix that. Let's just shoot a bat and we'll call it a video. Okay, add this to the Enforcer is a great perk montage, please. Let's just cripple some of those limbs here. The wing will fucking do if I can hit it. Probably not at this range with a shotgun, but I did send a crit into it, so that probably would have done something. Um, he's sort of standing off back there. We've actually managed to get him down, so that's pretty good. And what we'll do is we'll take out this guy. And probably exit bats a little bit. And... Nice attack there. You don't see that one very often. You see the queen do it. She goes like 50 meters. Alright, a little bit of, um... Whoops. Unfortunate reloading time. Maybe I shouldn't have put on this magazine. It seems a little bit of a waste, but, uh, regardless of that... We'll just build up our adrenaline by shooting the lesser scorched and 
Ooh, camera's going crazy. And... Yeah, okay. Maybe I could have done this in my power armor. That's something that, you know, you sort of benefit from a lot, but... Uh, you don't really need power armor to boost the damage output like with shotguns like you do that. But I definitely got staggered there a little bit too much. I probably could have been more meticulous in my uh, planning of that assault if I decided to take out its uh, legs there. That wouldn't have uh, charged at me. would have just made it plant there. But I was too focused on talking absolute shit and killing the gun zombies instead. But regardless, we managed to down it and uh, get it into an acceptable range where the shotgun did pretty well. And the shotgun did perform, it's just that my gameplay is <laughs> slowed down a little bit, but, uh, by all the staggerations, but, um, yeah, I think you get the points. So, if you'd like to see this thing in your game, uh, hit me up on Discord. First in, best dress gets a nice friggin' shotgun. I didn't, yeah, I didn't really talk about the extra limb damage, did I? But that's definitely helpful, that synergizes pretty well with uh, Enforcer there, but basically Enforcer's like a guaranteed chance because it's like 15 times 8 pallets, I think. I think. That might not be right, but it seems that way. Every crit that I get, all of the pallets hit, and it seems like it's an auto um, cripple every time. You saw it with the spouts before, but obviously the reload speed did also help us out because we had to read this, reload this thing every eight shells, which, uh, the stinging magazine gives us two extra, but that two extra feels like heaps more, but, uh, regardless of that, this has been a really, really fun weapon to use. Hit me up on the Discord if you want it. First in best dress, like I said before, so, uh, yeah. Thank you for watching, guys. See, you don't need explosive or blader on a shotgun to make it good. Just make your, your build better, kids, and the, the shotgun will do a lot of good work for you.